business team. We're here with an, another amazing guest this morning. And I have to tell you, she's even more amazing than I thought in the beginning. Um, she's actually, and I'll probably mess this up, but she's actually a board certified pediatrician and obesity doctor. She has um, a great repertoire of, of things that she understands that I need to understand. And so I'm excited to welcome Dr. Michelle Levitt today. Hi, I'm yeah. so happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you so much for saying yes. You know, and I want everyone to know this is a business page and we we talk about lifestyle because our brand is all about creating sexy businesses so we can have sexy lifestyles. But one of the top things for people who are successful is they actually learn to take care of themselves. And so what I asked Dr. Michelle to come on and talk about today is three reasons why you should eat sugar, <laughs> which, which obviously is a little twisted. So she will tell us. <laughs> okay. So as, a, as, as a big focus, we're talking to entrepreneurs. So three reasons why entrepreneurs should eat sugar. If number one, you would like to have brain fog, memory and learning problems. <laughs> if number two, you would like to have sugar crashes that lead to mood swings, irritability, more brain fog, tiredness, fatigue. Um, and three, you should eat sugar if you would like even more stress hormone cortisol released and uh, which leads to hanging on to weight, storing fat, and then also you not wanting to do anything else, not feeling like doing anything because you feel stressed and overwhelmed and tired. So if you would like to feel that way, you should eat sugar. <laughs> and so, so since we've decided or I decided that's not how I want to do things, can you tell us the, the proper way, I'll say, to, to do things? <laughs> well, I think the first thing to do is kind of to do a little bit of a self-assessment and figure out where are you at? So there's really over 140 toxic effects of sugar. And so what I recommend is you kind of go through a little symptom checklist or just a little self check, kind of from head to toe. Like, how is my memory? How is my focus? Do I have brain fog? Do I have memory issues? When I sit down to try to plan out my week or plan out something I would like to um, present as an entrepreneur, am I struggling with attention and focus? Um, do I feel tired all the time? Or do I have energy highs and lows? Do I feel um, I'm at my best weight? Do I feel like I'm sleeping well? Do I feel like my mood is stable? So you can kind of just go through, and there's lots of symptom checklists. Um, you can even just Google like 10 day detox. I have a symptom checklist list in my coaching materials, um, but you can, you know, there's a couple books you could read and I'll talk about the, some books at the end that will have kind of a little um, symptom checklist to kind of see, do you need to detox off sugar? So one is a kind of a symptom checklist or just a life checklist. Like, where am I at? How do I feel about my life? Do I feel like I have good energy? Um, do I feel like I have stable mood? Um, do I feel like my brain is sharp? All things we need as an entrepreneur. And then um, taking a look at your nutrition. Like, do I eat a lot of sugar? What, what do my meals consist of? Am I eating on the run? Am I eating on the fly? Am I grabbing and going? Do I eat breakfast? Do I skip breakfast? Do I eat a sugary breakfast? Um, so assessments are, are crucial as your first step to kind of see what you, where you need to go, what you need to change, because changing your nutrition and detoxing off sugar can be very hard. So if you're not really clear on why you're doing it, then you'll usually will kind of fall off repeatedly. So I start with the assessments because that gives you a really clear why and a really clear motivation. Like, you know what? I have been really foggy in my brain. I don't like this. This memory you know, loss is kind of scaring me a little bit. Or, you know what, I'm just packing on the pounds each year. And I just, you know what, I don't feel good about my body, which makes me not have confidence in myself as an entrepreneur. Um, and so that kind of gives you that spark you need to do something about it. So assessments are always first. And then I usually have you approach it. You could go either way. You could do like a just a hardcore cold turkey sugar detox. But I would recommend maybe hooking up with a coach or finding a 10 day detox online or different things. Um, so you can go cold turkey 
If you do, you literally need to like throw everything away in your house, do a clean sweep, uh, protect that home and, you know, be prepared to go cold turkey. But again, I don't recommend you do it alone without either just a friend or a coach or somebody who's going to hold you accountable or help you through the hard times. And then, um, but I usually do it with my patients and my clients. I actually do it step by step. So we start with changing drinks first and then we will change one meal at a time until we've detoxed off the sugar. So you can kind of go either way. So how do you feel? How do you feel about those approaches? <laughs> I think both are useful depending on what's going on with you. I think that that's one of the things that I learned, which is I didn't know I was foggy until I was not foggy. And I didn't know how tired I was until I wasn't tired. I mean, yeah. those are some of the things that I like, even if I would have gone through the list, I would have probably rated myself better than what I really was mm -hmm. because I wasn't aware of how it could be. I wasn't aware of how much more I could be um, just like sharp minded mm -hmm. and energy throughout the afternoon. You know, my thing was always the afternoon crash. Mm -hmm. you know, I would push really hard in the morning. I'm a morning girl and I would use that as an excuse as, you know, well, it's just because it's, I'm in the morning. So the afternoon must just be when I'm not mm -hmm. I'm yeah. supposed to have energy, but that's not true. Correct. Yeah. I Maybe. love what you said about, um, uh, no, I can't think what I was going to say. <laughs> I love what you said about, um, you don't know, you didn't know it wasn't normal. Like you didn't know you actually could feel better. So that, yeah. that is huge. Cause I think people have just come to accept mm -hmm. this new normal and they don't even know what feeling good feels like anymore. So I love that you said that um, because you want to know it's not normal. It's not normal to have that mid afternoon slump and re need to reach for a candy bar or something sugary to perk you back up or coffee, caffeine. It's not normal to have brain fog and poor memory. It's not normal. Even at, he's not even elderly, you know, we, Elderly people can stay sharp all the way till the end. So it's really not normal and it's not normal to feel fatigued and tired and low energy and mood swings. And, but I think, I think I love that you said that because I think people don't know there's something wrong because it's just become the new norm for them. Well, I think we're desensitized to our intuition. I think we're desensitized to listening to our bodies and, and, you know, and understanding that they're trying to tell us something because, you know, I'm 51. I turned 51 this year. And that's amazing. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> but I keep hearing from other people that, you know, well, in your 50s, you know, this is this is what happens in your 50s. This is going to. And I'm thinking, no, it, it doesn't have to be that way. Like we really do have right. opportunity. And, you know, I run in a circle of world changers. We're not playing. I mean, we're fun and we're silly, but we're not playing about what we're doing. We're serious about helping people mm -hmm. and we're still serious about serving. Well, I can't serve you if I'm so tired. I've got to go take a nap, you know, 12 times a day or I can't think of what to say to you to serve you. So I think it's a really important thing for anyone that owns a business or, you know, or even if you don't own a business, it, it, you know, it affects all of us, but don't let society, I guess, tell you that you have to have those kind of symptoms just because you're in a certain age bracket. Yes, I love that. I'm going to be 51 as well. So I, 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 I refuse to like give in to that middle aged. <laughs> yes. Well, and you're beautiful. I think that's awesome that we're the at least close to the same age. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, and you know, I have to tell you, there have been some things that were side effects of me being off sugar that I had no idea that sugar might be the culprit. Um, I'm less achy and, you know, not just energy and brain fog and things like that have cleared up, but um, my skin is better. My hair is better. I mean, there were things that I had... I really, and I still don't know the medical side of it. Like I'm, I'm a, just a princess. So I have like, you know, princess vocabulary. You have to speak simply to me to understand, but there's so many changes that have occurred in me that I just had no idea. And I've been, I've battled being overweight my whole life. I'd lose it and I'd gain it. And it always came back with more friends. 
you know, yeah. it always, <laughs> it always would go out and gather up more pounds to pack on. But <laughs> this, this year has really been a commitment of no more of that. If I want to eat sugar, I'm going to do it on purpose. If I don't want to eat sugar, I'm also going to do that on purpose. Mm -hmm. It's whatever. And I'm going to have to be okay with whatever it is. Yes. Because I'm not going to um, feel guilty or ashamed anymore about any of it. I still want to lose some weight. But, you know, if I don't, I'm still okay with I'm still okay with it right now because I know I'm taking major steps towards healthy. Yes. Good for you. Absolutely. So if, if somebody's watching, you know, and they're maybe they don't have any idea where to start, where is some place to start? Because I always say that, you know, if you give me an elephant, I'll choke every time. If you give me the bites of an elephant, I can I can do that. But if you try to feed me an elephant, I'll choke every single time. <laughs> right. Um, I think I think the first place to start is you kind of mentioned it, that you were committed this year. You were committed to taking care of your health. So I think you have to start with what am I ready to change and am I ready to change and then deciding what that is and then committing to it. So it might be something big. It might be something small. So you have to decide kind of what you're ready to change, because sometimes your life you know, is super stressful and there's a lot of things going on and you're like, uh, I'm going to do a 10 day sugar detox in the middle of 5,000 other stressors. And then you're not really ready to change that. And then you can't commit to it. And then you, so it's that cycle of like guilt and just like you're, just like you were saying. So decide what you're ready to change. And it kind of does have to start with those assessments. Like I talked about, um, that you may only want to pick one area. Like I just want to work on, um, you know, fatigue or I feel really inflamed in my joints. My joints are achy and I just want to work on that. So if it's more of a medical thing, you might want to work with a practitioner or a health coach or a dietitian, or if it's just generalized, like I just want overall generalized wellness, then you can just start with like chiseling away at each meal. So I'm with you. You could do like a, just a cold turkey detox, but it is a lot to swallow and people tend to like give up. Um, so I tend to have people start really slow. And so I'll have them start um, with, with sugar, sweetened drinks first. So whether you're drinking sweet drinks, sweetened with something, or diet drinks, I start there. Because that's a really pretty easy change, and it's a quick win. So you get, like, this quick win, which then you immediately start feeling better, and then that, like, encourages you to want to try something else, like change something else. So I start with drinks. Absolutely, both sugar, sweetened drinks and diet drinks do the same thing in our body as far as um, all the symptoms. So they still hit the addiction center of the brain. There's still a super sweet signal for our palates. They still spike the insulin, both of them. They still cause inflammation in similar ways, but, but sometimes different ways. So they both cause inflammation. They, and sugar basically, um, causes what's called leaky gut. And, and the diet drinks are really notorious for that. And the leaky gut is the source of inflammation everywhere. So some people might have more symptoms like joint aches, some have might might have more digestive symptoms and some might have more brain fog symptoms. And it all kind of stems from that the sugar or the diet drinks triggering leaky gut and inflammation in the body. Wow. So, yeah, I have a friend who challenged me to something um, and I thought he was crazy because I was um, in the mindset of I was in my 40s when I did this and. I was thinking, oh, you know, in my 40s, I'm supposed to get up and feel like I'm older than I am. You know, I'm supposed to get up and have my knees hurt and, you know, my back's bothering me or whatever. And he told me, he said, um, and he's a, he's a doctor in Oklahoma. And he said, I just want you to do 30 days without anything diet. He didn't even say anything about sugar or anything else. It was just diet stuff. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize how many diet things I was doing. Yes, I, you know, I, it's because I'm busy and I don't pay attention, which is no excuse, but that's exactly the reasoning. Cool. I had 30 days and at the end of the 30 days, I was not hurting in any of the places that I had been hurting before. Mm -hmm. And I did it kind of been a smarty pants because I thought, you know, there's no way 30 days and there's no way that's the problem. But it was the problem. It yeah. really did cause me issues. Mm -hmm. And so. Now, everybody that will listen to me, I ask them to do that 30 days. Yeah, yeah. And every, everyone that's done it says the same thing. They can't believe how much 
like more pain free they are more you know their their joints are just not as swollen yeah yeah so the diet drinks are filled with you know artificial sweeteners that kind of trigger that leaky gut but also a lot of additives and preservatives and other junk that we just don't know how our body's reacting to them so typically it's with inflammation and then you just feel bad and everyone kind of manifests different like you said um but yeah it's a simple it's a simple place to start because like you said, you took the challenge you know, for 30 days, just try it. Okay. You know, and it does, it brings awareness to, Whoa, I didn't realize I was doing diet this and diet that. And it's really, it's busyness is not really your fault. It's the food industry that markets to you. That's like, this is better. This is healthy. You should buy this. So it's, it's a natural response to as humans. We're like, Oh, I want to be healthy. So I'm going to buy this product because the food industry is marketing it to us as healthy. And really it's not as we can see when we get off of it, how much better we feel. So <laughs> Yeah. And we, and we literally want our cake and eat it too. Like that's the thing is <laughs> yes. I wanted the weight loss effect of what diet, but I didn't really want to give up my pop. I mean, that, that was my, <laughs> my thing. Yeah. Not, not having any idea that it was doing the damage it was doing to me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, going back to sugar too, I, when I first started thinking, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to do away with the sugar in my life. I started going through the things that we ate all the time that were not sugar. I thought mm -hmm. they were, I would go to the store and I would buy something that, you know, I was used to buying and I'd look and one of the top three ingredients was sugar. Mm -hmm. And there's so many different names for it. Yes, there is. That is a great point. So we think of sugar like sweet things always, which obviously those are the obvious things we want to start getting rid of. That's why I start with drinks first. But really, if you look at if you're starting to read labels, almost everything has sugar in it. So from things that aren't sweet up to things that are sweet up to salad dressings and ketchups and condiments. And so so I like what you said about reading the ingredient list. We do have to start reading labels and. Again, we're getting back to the food industry tricking us with other names for sugar. So we've, we've kind of got our radar out to sugar. We've got our radar out to high fructose corn syrup now, right? Because we've all heard that's bad. So now we kind of look for those. And so now the food companies, they're getting smart, right? They put no high fructose corn syrup on the front of the label. So you're like, cha-ching, I'm just going to buy that. But if you flip it over and read the ingredients, often there's two, three, four different kinds of sugar. And I can even put up, I can put up a link in the, um, in your comments that has like a sugar, uh, like a sugar cheat sheet, basically. Oh, that would be awesome. I kind of list you like all the different names for sugar. Cause there's like, you know, obvious like sugar, cane sugar, evaporated cane juice, you know, <laughs> there's rice, brown rice syrup and syrup and rice syrup and maltodextrin and dextrose and glucose and fructose. So it does help to know the other names for sugar. Because if this, if the food has a lot of big, long ingredient lists, typically you're going to get two or three different sugars in there. And often it is like the first or second ingredient. And then remember, like you said, you're not thinking you're buying something sugary like pasta. That's savory, right? It's not really sweet, but it immediately turns into sugar. Same thing with bread. So bread is not necessarily sugar like we think of a donut or a piece of cake. But when you look at the ingredients of bread or a pasta, it'll be some sort of grain. It might even say whole grain. And the next ingredient usually is sugar. Same thing with cereals. So you're kind of, you're thinking, oh, I'm buying this like oat bran. Oh, oh. And then you look, they'll have some sort of grain. And then the next ingredient typically is sugar. So all the grains and pastas and breads and starches turn into sugar in the body. But a good place to start is getting rid of sweet things. So maybe you're just getting rid of, you know, the candy bars and the donuts and the, you know, actual sweet dessert like items and then you can tackle like the breads and the pastas and the starches so again it's kind of baby steps because like you said it's harder to swallow the whole elephant you just want to kind of take on pieces of the elephant so yeah i definitely recommend you baby step it so <laughs> well, and you know i am a busy princess i do not have time or i feel like i don't have time um to take a lot of time you know at the grocery store or to take a lot of time i i have I'm very much a creature of habit. I, I find something that, you know, we like and, and we try to eat that often because I don't have to think about it, you know, and, and yes. I'm just guilty of this. Yeah. But when I started this um, journey, I thought I would never be able to 
fit this all in because it seems such a huge deal by the time you read all the labels that you're going to go buy stuff and then figure out an alternative and then, you know, figure out different meals because the old meal didn't work anymore. Or, you know, I really, I really got frustrated at one point and thought this is too much. I guess I'm just going to have to stay unhealthy because I can't do all this. I, I don't have time for all this. And so I kind of stepped away for a minute and regrouped. And when I went back to do it, you know, again, I, I kind of did it in reverse. I kind of did the things that I knew didn't have sugar first mm -hmm. and then started planning our meals around that, yes. you know, where instead of fighting the system or fighting the, the things that, you know, say no corn starts or no right. high fructose corn syrup and all that. I just kind of went to the, which is probably what everybody's been telling me for years and I just never heard it, <laughs> but to go to the produce aisles first yes. and, to, you know, to pick the things that are not processed and to pick the things that are, you know, natural as, as natural as you can get them. And I will tell you, I spend less time now. Yes. Life is so much simpler. Mm -hmm. And we have huge variety. It's not, you know, because when you first start into this journey, it feels like mm -hmm. you can't have anything. Right. Right. You know, because the, the, the industry is to put sugar in everything or hide it in there. Mm -hmm. And the, the truth is, I think that's only one of the things that are harmful in most of the products that have sugar in them. Right. Absolutely. Like you were saying the whole list. Mm hmm. Yeah. And I want to be like wearing my red lipstick and being feisty when I'm a hundred, you know, <laughs> I want, <laughs> I, I'm just like getting started is how I feel now, you know, you will. I love that. Yeah. I'm just getting started. That's perfect. But and that is, that is the key. I mean, I try to have people shoot for if you, if the food does not have a label at all, you're winning. So you want to shoot for real whole foods that don't actually have a label like a grass fed hamburger or a piece of fruit or a cucumber. You don't have to actually spend time reading labels because they don't have, they just are that food. One food, one ingredient food <laughs> like cucumber. <laughs> and so if you're shopping the perimeter of the grocery store. You're some, it depends on the grocery store setup. So I think Aldi's is set up a little bit different, but most of the grocery stores you walk in and produce is first. Mm. And then you might get to the deli and meat section, dairy section, frozen section, and you're out. So you don't even have to go down any of those aisles, which have all the package process stuff, spending time wondering if stuff healthy. There's nothing healthy down those aisles. Yeah. Very little things. So I love that you said that because people do get busy and they get overwhelmed. And so you just have to keep the meal simple at first. So if your goal is weight loss or your goal is changing over your whole family for whatever reason, I recommend you keep it super simple. Eat the same thing all the time at first. Then, of course, we want to add variety. We want to get lots of vitamins and minerals. We want to make sure you don't have any deficiencies. But at first, I do recommend you eat the same thing because it's easier, quicker, till you get systems down and kind of get into feeling good. And then you can keep going and adding more variety, more recipes, more changes. But, yeah, shopping the perimeter and things that don't even have a label are going to be your go-to items. Well, and I can tell you one of my – um, tools in my tool bag is that I do shop at Aldi a lot. Mm -hmm. um, Aldi seems to be um, the key to this princess's success as far as I, I don't have to spend so much time. Right. You know, right. They don't have, they don't have 15 different kinds of eggs. Yes. Yeah. You know, 25 different varieties of like ketchup or whatever. They, they have very specific, you know, things that, and I love, I love it simple. Yes. They don't have so many choices, which will tempt you and confuse you. So yeah, I love all these. Yeah. So I think it's a, probably a really good place to start too. If you don't, Absolutely. don't know where to start, start simple mm -hmm. and you know, the simpler, the better in, in wow. my world, that is the key to getting me to do anything is to make it very clear and simple. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. I have, I have a keep it simple uh, handout too I can put up. So it's just super simple food list and it's just whole food list. Nothing fancy. Keep your plate simple. Keep it simple. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Well, 
I appreciate you like giving those kind of resources because like I said, it's, it's important for all of us, but if you really have um, a desire to change the world through your business or through, you know, being an entrepreneur, it, you have to be proactive and not reactive. Like you have to take the steps to take care of yourself in a way that I think you're just called to a higher standard, you know, and maybe I'm wrong about that, but that's how I feel. I feel like I have a lot of responsibility to those that I serve to show up well. Yes. Yes. I love that. Yes. And I love that you said you're a world changer because we can't be a world changer if we don't feel good. And world changers are role models, right? So if you want to change the world, it starts with being a role model. People are looking at you. People are watching you. And you might be inspiring an entrepreneur. You might be inspiring a mom. You might be inspiring your kids or your spouse. So we are all world changers and we're all role models. It's just a matter of which way are we changing it and which way, what are we role modeling? So, yeah. yeah. But I love that you um, take on that mindset that that's who you are because you're here to serve and you're here to change the world. And part of that is taking control of your health. And so that can inspire other, other people to do the same. So I love that. <laughs> we're influencers of influencers. That's, that's yeah. what I tell, tell our crew all the time. That is exactly what we're doing is we're influencing people who influence people. Yes. And that's how we're really, the world. <laughs> it's important. Yeah. It's important. Yeah. The last thing I would like to address about this um, is, you know, we've talked about the time and, and the breaking it down into steps and the reasons why, you know, it's important. But I'd also like to address the one of the things that I hear, which is the money side of it. Mm -hmm. You know, people will say um, it's so much less expensive to buy like mac and cheese in a box. Mm -hmm. Or it's so much less expensive to buy, you know, that sugary cereal or, and, and I do think there is a method to how they market it to us mm -hmm. because, you know, for the minute it may seem cheaper, but now that we're like converted over to the, you know, the produce and the, and the grass fed beef and, you know, the things that are, um, high quality, mm -hmm. we actually spend a lot less money. Yes. Yes. And it is, it's a mindset shift and a budget shift. So you're just shifting the funds. I tell people because, um, if you're, I mean, even though that one box macaroni and cheese is like two for 99 cents, you know, you might, you're going to buy like 20 other things and that all adds up. So it does add up. But the problem with those foods is they don't fill you up and they lead to more hunger and cravings. So you actually eat more. So you start with one box of macaroni and cheese and then you're not full, nor did you like replenish your nutrients that your body needs. So your body's still craving, still looking. Then you're going to eat something else. Then you're going to eat something else. Then you're still going to be hungry. Then you're going to get a little snack. So you have to buy all these extra more food because you're still hungry. You're still craving. You're not meeting your nutrient, nutrient needs. But if you ate like a well-balanced just meal with lots of protein and healthy fats and fiber from the produce, you're going to feel full and satisfied and the meal's done. So it's really like shifting of we have to have all these extra products because we're still hungry and we're still craving and we're still eating all the time. So I tell families, just give it a try, you know, but I also, if people are really fighting me on it, then I'll just have them add up like, okay, let's look in your cupboard. You have six boxes of cereal at $3 a pop. That's 18 bucks right there. Okay. Now we have four boxes of granola bars, which are two, three, four dollars a box. Let's, you know, and then, okay, let's, how much meat can we buy for that? And vegetables can we buy for that? And then just start letting them see the shift a little bit. And then I really encourage people to shop at places like Aldi's. They're starting to have organic grass fed meat there. Um, and also farmer's markets. Now that we're getting into the spring, summer, and even those farmer's markets will take the food stamps. So I tell families if they're on food stamps, a lot of times they'll even double your coupons. So you can get more food. Um, oh, yeah. So the farmer's market are a great place to go. And then, um, you know, places like Aldi's looking for the, or people can start looking for like food co-ops or where they can buy a whole entire cow or half of a cow. So you're going to get it much cheaper um, and kind of just stocking up in advance. So there's different ways. You just have to kind of shift the funds a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. But a lot of people just, even though I, we start with drinks and they don't realize how much they're spending on this water additive and then this drink and this diet pop. And then this, as soon as I do that, they're like, Oh, I have, you know, 25 extra bucks a month or a week. 
for, you know, that I was just spending on drinks alone. So as soon as they start kind of making the swap, you'll realize, like you said, you actually end up saving money. I, I had to do this shift. I'm doing it all the time because I do it with my patients, but I have a 16 year old. So he just came off swim team. So we kind of had a little more like boxes of different like protein bars and different things. And I just, I was like, we need just to clean this up. So like our cupboards are pretty much empty. And then our fridge is fairly full, but we try to shop like a little more often. And even if, even on the busier person, you can still make it work kind of by planning your meals. And if you plan your meals too, you're going to be better off with money too, versus just randomly buying stuff. And then not really knowing what you're eating, then the food goes bad. So planning and prepping goes a long way with budget as well. Well, and I think it all is entwined together because if I'm foggy brained, I'm going to pick a candy bar. Yes. And if I'm, if I am tired, I'm going to pick, you know, whatever the thing is in the box that I can throw in the microwave and then put on the table because I, I am too tired. Yeah. But then it's the spiral of now we're going down even farther because now tomorrow I'm even more tired. Yes. And, you know, and everybody's starving. That's the other thing. They're starving because yeah. they're not getting the nutrition. And so right. when you start making the shift, I think that's, it's typical of having to work your way to the tipping point. Mm -hmm. You know, when you start something, gravity pulls on you the hardest when you're trying to get lift off. Yes. I think that that's a key to, especially mamas. I had a whole pack of boys that, you know, I felt like I never could get them full and yeah. they ate healthy, but they were ravenous because they played sports and, you know, they were active. Yeah. So I think, Preparation is a key. Mm -hmm. Making the decision not to compromise. If you know, I've actually gotten to the point. My husband and I have actually gotten to the point where, if we're gonna eat bad, or we're gonna go like without dinner, mm -hmm. we'll go without dinner sometimes because it's like we just are choosing to do the opposite, or we'll do a, you know, like um, a spinach shake or something. Yeah, we'll do something that's not something that either one of us, you know, would think, Ooh, I think I'll just go have a spinach shake. You know, that would have never crossed. That would never come out of our mouths a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. But now it's a choice. Right. It is a there choice. It always was. Yes. <laughs> there always was. You're right. And you're being very intentional about your choices. So I usually recommend to people keep your home protected. So like when you, because then when you have those weak moments and you just, you, you can't reach for it because it's not there. So keep your home protected. And then if you want to go enjoy pizza and ice cream, then go enjoy pizza and ice cream. If you intentionally really want to choose that, but you go out of the home and you're intentionally choosing it and you might even decide on the way there, you know what? We don't really want this. We would like to keep in line with our goals and our commitments. So it is a personal commitment to yourself. And I think we do a lot of, we keep our commitments to everybody else but our own personal commitments, we tend to like let ourselves go. So it's just starting with a personal commitment to yourself, which then lets you do things like, we don't feel like having a green smoothie, but we made this commitment, so we're gonna have a green smoothie instead of, you know, ordering pizza or whatever. So love that, so proud of you. <laughs> Thank you. I will tell you, we had pizza one night on purpose, like by choice, that was what we decided. We were thinking we were hungry for it and, and we went in and got a pizza and we ate it. And it was so funny because after being away from like the same kind of eating that we had done a long time, mm -hmm. it didn't taste as good. Yes, I know. <laughs> like, yeah. It, it, it just didn't. Remember. Yeah. <laughs> so good. Yeah. But I love that you said you chose it and you're not going to feel guilty. You're going to thoroughly enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, you know what? This didn't taste so good. We're probably not going to do this again, you know? So yeah. Or you ate less of it or than you would have before. So yeah, we, we, yeah. <laughs> and it, I love it. You got you're back to intuitive eating. You're you're intuitive on different levels, and it, it just makes the success so much easier. Well, yeah. and I want everyone watching, you know, to be able to get connected with you. If if you will help me put the right links in the comments so that yeah. they can follow you, because if you're watching and you want some great tips on life in general, like. Dr. Levitt's amazing with the things. I actually caught her on a on a live that I was like, oh, my goodness, I didn't know that, and I didn't know that, and I didn't know that, and I thought I was pretty savvy. <laughs> and so, yeah. It was amazing. Yeah. 
I will put I will put some links in the comments. I, my big focus right now is I have a um, course I call Unprocess Your Family, and it just teaches you just what we talked about, basically. How do we get off processed foods? Where do we start? It just takes all the overwhelm out of it. And I provide a lot of education so you know why instead of just like someone trying to put you on a diet. So real slow, step by step. But um, I think that's the key no matter where you're starting is just start unprocessing first. And then depending on your goals, you might go down different roads. But back to the budget thing, um, I, I think you don't have to, to eat real whole food. You don't have to go out and buy organic everything. Hmm. So if you just take a step of switching off processed, boxed, packaged junk and eating whole food, whether it's organic or not, you're going to be just fine. Do those non-organic, some things have a little bit more pesticides and chemicals? Yes, but you're still doing better than you were with all the processed packaged foods and all the chemicals you're getting in your body. So start there. Then when your budget allows, figure out which things you want to buy a little more organic or spend a little more money on. So I just kind of remember that with the budget budget thing. So that people, I think, think they have to just switch right over to like 8 million, everything has to be organic, um, and it doesn't. But also a little caution if a granola bar says it's organic granola bar, it's still a granola bar. It's still junk, okay? Organic sugar, it's still sugar. So organic sugar is going to do the same thing in your body as regular old cheap sugar. So don't be fooled and pay more money for organic fruit snacks <laughs> because it says organic on it. So I kind of want to – that doesn't have anything to do with um, <laughs> my site, but I just – I was like, I remember that from the budget thing because that, that is a thing that comes up a lot. So, Well, that's important, though, because we – you know, that's the – I think that's the hardest thing is we're, especially moms, they're super busy. If they're entrepreneurial moms, they're like a million times busy. And right. then we're asking them to make all these choices every day, you know, that are, yeah. that are just too much. Yeah. And when you get to making one, just one choice a week or just one choice every time you go to the grocery store, one thing better you know, and, and you make that commitment. I think it's awesome. And I think it's awesome. You have a course to like help them through that because I didn't really have that. I've kind of stumbled my way through most of my life. <laughs> I've stumbled my way through figuring some things out. And, you know, I've had some awesome people speak into my life and, and help me with one area or, you know, parts of it so that I did get better with those things. Yeah. So I don't want to sound like it's all me because it's not. It's lots of different people. But I think having someone who really understands that it's not an easy process. It's simple, right. but it's not easy. Right, right. And someone who knows really why. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if you come alongside me, you just tell me, okay, you can't have this, you can't have this, you can't have this. Mm -hmm. My first thing is going to be rebel. Because yeah. right. I, I'm going to yeah. be doing without something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. And how I take you through it is I, I start with where are you now? And then I teach you something about sugar or whatever. And then I say, now that we know what sugar could do to our body, what would you like to change? What do you feel like you could change? Because then it's not me telling you do this, do that. Don't do this. Don't do that. Restrict this. Don't restrict that. Um, take this drug. Don't take this. You know, you're deciding based on what you just learned. So I love That's that. You so powerful. Well, and you're giving them the power because they're making the choice. Right. Like you're going to eat how you're going to eat, whether they do or not. Right. Right. And so I yeah. think that's one of the keys is that they've got to know that they can pick whatever. Yes. Yes. You're not mad at me because I ate pizza the other night. Right. That's one of those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's people like you did. How did that make you feel? Like, did you feel, you know, did you feel good or did you, I felt really like gassy and bloated and I just didn't feel good. I don't know why I did that. Make the connection with the food and you're like, you know what? I don't want to feel like that anymore. I'm not going to do that again. So yeah, teaching people get, getting back to their intuition, paying attention to how foods make them feel. So that way they can have a personal reason why they don't want to do it versus someone telling you it's bad for you. Right. And yeah. I think that's a key. Yeah. They have a personal experience why it's bad for them. And like you said, once you come off of it, how great you feel, you didn't realize you were feeling so bad until you feel, now you feel so good. You're like, oh my goodness, I can't believe I was living that way for so long. I feel so amazing now. So that's huge. The funny thing is, is I think I feel more um, spry and more energetic in my 50s than I did when I was in my 20s. Yeah, good for you. And it's funny because, you know, I would have not thought that to be possible. Mm -hmm. But right. 
it, it is possible. It is possible. Yes. <laughs> yes. I love it. Well, we are out of time and I hate this part because I never want to run out of time when it's such a good conversation. Thank you so much for like saying yes, first off to doing this and helping everyone listening because, and me, especially me, because <laughs> it, it is such a hot topic that people are, you know, they argue about stuff and all that, but you've made it very simple, very clear. And I love that you're offering tools, you know? Yeah. Yes. Everybody needs tools. Yeah. Tools and support. Thank you so yeah. much. And if if yeah. you're not already following this power little powerhouse, I want you to go and follow her. We'll post her page link in the comments so that you can get there and follow her on Facebook too, because she does a lot of really great um, live videos and she will teach you so much in just a few minutes. It's like, wow. <laughs> so anyway, thank you so much, Dr. Michelle. Yeah. So happy I can come on. <laughs> I'm happy you get to. If you're watching, be sure and check the comments for all the links. She's been very generous to offer you tools and support and, and just get connected with her. So this is Kim White with the My Sexy Business team. We're here to help you create sexy businesses for sexy lives like Dr. Levitt has. Bye, guys. Bye.